friends, it's Shari. Today I have a very special thank you card to share. This thank you card is inspired by the Blue Ridge and Appalachian Mountains where I live in North Carolina that have been recently devastated by Hurricane Helene. I can't make you all a thank you card, but I can make a thank you card that tells you how much I am thankful for your help and your continued help in the future. So here are some of the things I'm going to use for my card today. I have the giant thank you, of course, the mountain border dies and the forest backdrop. For my background sky, I'm using watercolor wishes and I'm pulled out that lighter yellow paper. This is going to be kind of a sunset sky in the background. And of course, these are the Blue Ridge Mountains, so I'm going to use some blue watercolor wishes rainbow paper for my mountains. I use the 12 by 12 because I get those big blue stripes, and you're going to see why that works out so well here in just a little bit. For my yellow, I will cut that down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And then for the forest backdrop, I wanted this to look like a wooden picture frame. So I'm cutting this from the light brown wood grain cardstock. I'm going to trim this down so that when I cut my forest backdrop die, my wood grain runs vertically. So I've cut that backdrop and you can see how this is going to shape up. Now I want to cut the trees that also come in the forest backdrop. And I've pulled out the textured canvas greens cardstock pack and pulled out three different shades of green. There are two sizes of tree and there's also a tree that cuts out a solid so you can see it through the little openings in the details. So I've cut that darker kind of olive green with the solid trees and I'm going to layer the lighter colors over top so you see that green through those little scallop details on the trees. So I have two little light green trees and then I'll have two darker big trees and we will layer these on the front and kind of overlap them to frame up our little scene nicely. Now I always feel like some ink blending brings these die cut pieces to life and I'm going to start out with my frame. I'm using some walnut ink and you can see as I add this and dust the edges of this frame it really makes that stitching detail stand out and also that wood grain really kind of comes to life. My idea behind this was that we're not perfect right now. We are imperfect because we've suffered from lots of destruction from the flooding and the hurricane and I thought it would be kind of fitting to kind of grunge up this frame a little bit. So I'm also adding some white paint splatters as well. And this just adds even more texture to this piece. I got it a little bit too wet so I need to grab a little more paint on here and kind of get it the right consistency. I have way more than I need but that's okay. And then I'm going to pick it up and flick it off of a block so that I get some smaller splatters all around. I'm not too concerned about the trees because we're going to cover that up. So those top corners and then the frame at the bottom is really what I'm concerned about. So now that that white splatter is dry, I'm going to work on my mountains. So here is that piece that I pulled out to do the mountains. I like that we get these really wide stripes in this paper collection. And what I'm going to do is cut this in half so it's six inches. And then I'm going to trim down to where I have those two blues at the bottom. And you can see that these blues are kind of different tones. It would all depend on the look you're going for. Now I can take this and take my two mountain borders and I can cut both of them at the same time. So I'm going to make my darker mountains in the foreground with the smaller mountain border and my lighter mountains in the background with the bigger mountain border. And then I'll just run this through my die cut machine all at once and I get both mountain ranges to kind of layer one on top of each other. And then I'll just trim off the bottom too. It is much longer than I need and it's much wider, but it's easier to start out with something that's a little too big and trim it down as needed. So I just need to glue these two pieces of mountains together and I'm just going to add some tape runner on the back and layer them together and then I can trim them down as one piece. So I'm going to put them in my frame, decide how far up I want them to go, and then I'm just going to make a little pencil line about where I need to trim it off at the bottom. So I can trace right along the bottom of that frame and trim the bottom of these mountains off. 
Now it is six inches wide because that's what I started with. So I also need to trim off a quarter of an inch on each side. Which you could also do with your scissors. You could go ahead and assemble this and trim it off with your scissors as well. So this is how this is going to look, but I felt like it needed a little more color to look like a sunset. So what I'm doing is I'm shifting my mountains down. You can see they're not lined up with the bottom right now. And I'm going to lightly draw a pencil line just so I kind of know where they're at. And this is just a guide for me. It's very light. And actually, as I inked over it, it kind of disappeared. So to create my sunset behind my mountains, I'm adding some wild rose ink to the bottom. So I'm not too concerned that the bottom is nice and smooth. You can see I'm not really starting off my paper because I would have to ink a lot and bring it up really high. I'm really just concerned from my pencil line up. And so I am adding that, and I'll look at it with my mountains, and I feel like I need to add a little bit more. You just kind of add a little bit of time until you get the look that you want. And this really gave the look of a sunset over the mountains with that kind of glow at the base. So now for my sentiment, I cut the giant thank you from some narwhal cardstock. And it looked pretty good, but I wanted it a little bit darker. And so what I'm using now is some storm cloud ink and I'm just kind of giving it a gray ombre look so darker at the top and pulling that ink down and actually I decided to make it even a little more dark at the very very top and I grabbed my black licorice ink and my black blending brush and just added just a touch of that black right at the top and you're going to see me grab my gray brush again and just use what ink was left on it just to kind of pull that storm cloud ink down into the word you a little bit. So we have this kind of cool gray ombre look and that's going to stand out really nicely on the background. Now we don't want to forget our trees. We want to do a little inking on those as well. I'm using some artichoke ink and a little blending brush and I'm blending the outside edge of the trees. So you can see one is the right side and one is the left side. And then I'll do the same to my little trees as well. And this is just going to kind of bring those die cuts to life a little bit more and make them stand out. So now that I've got all my ink blending done, I can start to assemble my card. And I am going to start by putting these trees onto that forest backdrop. And I actually kind of like the look of the trees without the green ones because you do get that nice stitching detail. But in this case, I wanted a little more color added to this card. So I just put the big ones down first and then I'll layer the little ones on top. You could even pop these up with foam if you wanted, but I'm going to end up popping up the whole frame. So I'm taking my yellow watercolor wishes paper that I ink blended with the wild rose ink and I'm going to go ahead and add that to my card base. Then I can add my mountains. I did think about popping these up so I had some dimension but I wanted the frame popped up so I decided to glue these directly to the background so that they kind of sit behind. And then here are all the foam that I put all over the frame. Those foam strips are perfect for this frame because of those small areas close to the edges. And I just think that this looks really cool with the mountains sort of back in the background. And then I added the foam strips to the back of my thank you as well so that it could be popped up and we get a nice shadow between the sentiment and the scene behind it. Now I am kind of putting it a little bit higher because I am going to add some little forest critters to the bottom. So I looked through my stamps. Finding tiny critters is a little hard, but I did find the little bear and the little wolf and I'm going to stamp those in some jet black ink so that I can color them with my Copic markers. So I know I have said before that I always color my bears, or not always, but a lot of times I color them as black bears because black bears are what we have where I live. And of course, I don't want it to be super black, so I will color these with some warm grays so that we don't lose the details of the eyes and the face. And then of course for the muzzle, I need a light brown for the muzzle. For the wolf here, I'm using some 
neutral grays because I want them to be a different tone of gray and obviously I'm going to color this one a little bit lighter as well. So I'm using the N5 and 3 for the body. I use the 3 and the 1 for the head and then I like to add a little bit of gray and then a very pale brown for kind of that chest area in the muzzle of the wolf. And then I'll use the coordinating dies to cut these cute little critters out. And now I can add them to my card. So I want to put a foam square behind their heads so it's supported, but the bottom part of their bodies is going to be on the frame that's already popped up. So I just added a little bit of liquid glue to that area where it's going to overlap the trees and the frame. I did have a quite a few more critters, but I narrowed it down and I really like the way this turned out. And of course, I need to add some little hearts and some little love. So I have some raspberry cardstock and the hearts and stars skinny tag die. And I'm adding those hearts to those top corners so they don't look so empty. And I decided to use only one heart at the bottom with my little animals. And of course, you know we need to add some glitter, so I'm adding my stickles to the little hearts. And then I'm also going to add some to the bottom of the letters, kind of like they've been dipped in glitter. And I'm not being too generous, I'm being very light-handed with this glitter. And then I'm going to take my finger and kind of spread it around a little bit. I didn't want this to be too, too glittery. I just wanted kind of that subtle shimmer. So this is just kind of spreading out that glitter a little more. And as it dries, that kind of wet look will go away. So here is my finished card and I really love the way it turned out. I just think it is so beautiful and it is the perfect way to say thank you for everything that everyone has done and will continue to do in the coming months as we try to get back to normal. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.